How's it guys? This is Davey FPL and welcome back to the Fantasy Premier League video here on my channel. Now in this video, I'm going to be going through my first initial wildcard draft for the upcoming game week 9. So if you guys are lucky enough to be on a wildcard for the upcoming game week over this international break, this is going to be the exact video for you guys to kind of set the mood for your current draft. But don't worry, if you guys are not on your wildcards like myself, I used that last week in game week 8. This video will still be quite relevant as we'll be approaching some future options that we can bring in on those free transfers. But the Game Week 8 and Game Week 9 wildcard are quite different and I'll be addressing those differentiators in a wildcard guide coming up next week. So this video is going to be kind of very initial, I'm not going to be going into the fixtures too much, I'm going to simply give you guys a wildcard template that I would currently have as you guys approach next week. Now if you guys have any questions, drop them in the comments down below or as I always say, join our Discord server where I am slightly more active than the YouTube comments. But if a wildcard draft is something that you guys are interested in, sit back, relax and let's get straight into it. So obviously the first big talking point is going to be all about the international break. You might be saying to yourself, Davey, why are you looking at a wildcard draft already when so much can happen over the international break? And you guys are right if you are asking that question. But it's always nice to kind of have a plan in place and then we address with the unknowns as they come along. So that's why I have titled this kind of my first initial wildcard draft. We'll update it next week when we do get some more confirmation about playing time, injuries and all that good stuff. But if you guys are planning to use the wildcard in Game Week 9 or have already activated the chip, I'd simply just ride those price rises and drops and hopefully there's more of them in Game Week 9 than Game Week 8 because I unfortunately couldn't upgrade my price value that much. So just ride those price rises and drops for the time being, have an initial kind of draft and then come next week when all the news is available to you, we can finalize that draft quite quickly. But over this international break, if you guys are on a wild card, it's even more imperative that you guys kind of pay attention to the injury news and the playing time because your kind of selection is going to be determined on a full starting 15 instead of us other managers who have kind of one or two chances to play with. But as long as you guys stay active on this channel and over on FBO Twitter, you'll get all the news coming to you as soon as those games are taking place. And that'll be up until next week, Tuesday or Wednesday. But now going on to the actual wildcard draft, so yes, we're actually going slam bang into the draft. We're not really looking at fixtures too much, and the reason for that is that next week's videos, I'll be going over kind of wildcard guide. In the final wildcard guide, I'll be going over the base fixtures, the top six fixtures, all that good stuff. Right now, it's a simple initial plan because I don't want to do too much planning, and then maybe an injury comes about over the weekend. Now, as with all my kind of draft videos, I'll be going over the kind of price structure and formational structure first, and then I'll be looking at the fixtures in Game Week 9, and then also at the end, I'll be taking a look at Game Week 12, because if you guys do remember, Arsenal and Man City blank in that Game Week, and you might have one or two of their options in Game Week 9's wildcard. So I'll be showing you guys the Game Week 12 plan, because on a Game Week 9 wildcard, you guys have to prepare for that Game Week. But with all that said and done, let's get on to our first initial goalkeeper pairing. And that's actually going to be Guaita from Crystal Palace and then also Danny Ward from Leicester. So Danny Ward, we can't escape him. The cheapest 4.0 playing goalkeeper that you guys can buy. I know that he might actually get negative points and might even be a hindrance owning him. But the fact of the matter is, he's a cheap option and I might even play him in Game Week 9. And the reason for that is I have opted for Guaita at 4.5 million. You guys know those Crystal Palace fixtures look simply outstanding. We've spoken about Wolfred Zaha in depth. Now the Game Week 9 fixture might not be that great, it is Chelsea at home though, and who kind of knows how they're going to set up defensively under Potter, should be pretty strong, but I still think that Crystal Palace could score, maybe even keep a clean sheet. But definitely the fixtures from Game Week 10 onwards are the reason why we are picking Guaita up until that first wildcard, there are some concerns about some potential rotation, if you guys do recall Sam Johnson was signed in the transfer window, but I do think Guaita's current first choice, unless he does get an injury. So you guys should be hoping and praying that he doesn't get injured because Danny Ward is not a sufficient replacement. Now we're going to go onto our back line. Another first player might be slightly controversial, but I've actually picked Trent Alexander-Arnold here at 7.4 million. So price drop recently dropped from 7.5 to 7.4, but I still do believe if you guys are going to go on a Game Week 9 wildcard, I would opt for at least two Liverpool assets. The reason I'm saying that is yes, you can plan those future transfers, but from Game Week 12 onwards, the Liverpool fixtures look simply outstanding. Now please monitor Trent's playing time over this kind of England camp, the UEFA Nations League. I'd like to see him get a break because the Liverpool schedule has been pretty strenuous. So let's just say that Trent doesn't play every fixture as is expected for England, not necessarily the first right back choice under Gareth Southgate. So maybe he gets a rest, should be raring to go for game week 9. But Davey, this is going to be one of those players that if you guys do want to downgrade an option, I won't be too against downgrading Trent because the game week 10 and 11 fixtures against Arsenal and City don't look that strong. But what I will say is that everything in the Liverpool side goes through Trent and also Liverpool play better against the better opposition and therefore a clean sheet could even be on the cards against Arsenal and even maybe Man City. So I do still like Trent as I mentioned, he's very central to Liverpool's attack and you have to hope they maybe get a clean sheet in the next three. But you might be asking if I'm going for Trent, maybe I haven't gone for the other premium defenders but don't worry, Cancelo's going to still be in my wildcard draft. 
So coming in at 7.1, had a recent price rise after kind of racking up three bonus points, even though he only got a clean sheet. Now Cancelo's attacking threat has actually dipped a bit from prior seasons, but I still do like him as a Man City defender. But yes, if you guys are short on funds, maybe a Diaz, that sort of thing, could be an option. Maybe even a Kanji who's newly signed for them and could actually be a nailed center back. But I still like Cancelo at his price point. You're getting a nailed Man City defender and you guys know how good Man City have been this season and that's how I wouldn't go without them. Now, fixtures upcoming aren't that great, and they also do blank in game week 12, but my strategy is to currently bench him in game week 12. And kind of completing that trinity at the back, it's going to be Reese James as our third premium defender. I just really like Reese James. The Chelsea fixtures look strong under Graham Potter. I'm just hoping that he is nailed at either right back or right wing back, depending on what formation Graham Potter opts for. I just think on the stat side of things, Reese is always top four defenders, and with some nice fixtures coming up, hopefully those attacking returns and those defensive returns start flowing in. Now this will be one of those similarities, kind of Cancelo and James from a game week 8 to game week 9 wildcard. And I actually brought him in on my wildcard to bench him in that blank fixture because of those game week 9 and onwards fixtures. Now the last two defenders I opted for are going to be super budget. Now my favorite budget option of choice, unfortunately, I didn't opt for him on my wildcard draft. It's going to be Patterson from Everton. Some hit or miss fixtures coming up for Everton, but I do think that at 4.1 million, you guys can't go wrong with this option. Kept a clinch against West Ham, looked like one of their best defenders in that fixture. And that's why he's going nowhere near that bench. But unfortunately, he'll probably be on my bench most game weeks in my FBL team. But in terms of Everton, looks nailed and is viable over these kind of blank upcoming fixtures. And then our last defender to go for is going to be Neko Williams. Simple option there. Cheap budget enabler that does play. And I can't see him being dropped from that Nottingham Forest team. Now, the only concern, and I always say this about any defender, you shouldn't bring a defender in if they're not going to get clean sheets. And that's pretty much the exact case of the Williams. But because he is around 4 million, I'm willing to let that rule go aside. So overall, as you can see, in terms of the defense, a power premium three and then the two budget enablers. But the biggest concern is probably not going with Trippier. But you guys will see when I talk about the fixtures. I personally don't think the Newcastle fixtures are that great. Maybe from an attacking point of view, but definitely not from a defensive point of view, with fixtures are coming against Fulham, Brentford, and then also United. So that's the simple reason why Trippier hasn't been here. But if you guys do want to get some cash, probably a Trent or a Cancelo downgrade to Trippier is viable. But who kind of knows? Maybe next week, in terms of my final wild card, I'll have Trippier back in the team. We're now going to start off our midfoot apartment with yet another controversial opinion and yet another Liverpool asset. It's going to be Mo Salah. So I know Mo Salah over someone like a Kevin De Bruyne, definitely over probably a Son, even though he just scored a hat-trick, but the minutes rotation might be a risk there. And that's why Salah for me is perfectly viable. So yes, I know that he's super expensive, the most expensive option in the game at the current moment, probably going to be overtaken by Haaland eventually. But in terms of Salah, I just think Brighton up next. And as I mentioned with Trent, you want to bring Salah in game week 12 anyways. So instead of pencing in a transfer, I brought him in for these upcoming games. Similar reasoning to Trent, Liverpool play better against the better opposition and also against those better sides. More counter-attacking football probably will be taking place from Salah and Liverpool and I really do favour him on the counter-attack. So that's why I've gone for most Salah, I think on a Game Week 9 wildcard, you guys probably should unless you're really keen on De Bruyne over the next two. Now next up is also probably one of those more essential options on a Game Week 9 wildcard. For me it's a no-brainer, it's James Madison with those two lovely Leicester figures coming up. So if you guys don't know, Nottingham Forest at home this week, Bournemouth away next week, two newly promoted sides. Probably the best two games on paper in the Prem at the moment. And that's why Madison is a no-brainer for me. Now, I benched him in game week eight, and he also scored against Spurs. Pretty tough opponent. Was unlucky actually not to get more than that. And that's why I think for me, you have to have him. Some people even saying that he's a captain consideration for the upcoming game week nine with that lovely fixture. Next up is a player that doesn't have a great fixture in game week nine, but has a great fixture from game week 10 onwards. It's Wilfred Zaha from Crystal Palace. So already spoken about those fixtures in terms of Guaita, but in terms of Zaha, main talisman for that side. And that's why I do really like him as an option. So taking the fixtures out of consideration, if you guys are a stats manager, in terms of midfielder, Zaha rates very highly in terms of all the attacking stats. So yes, this might be one of those players that you actually leave out for game week nine. If you're more of a Maverick manager, I might take a punt on another kind of mid-range midfielder, maybe even a Harvey Barnes if you want to go there. But definitely come game week 10, you want to opt for him. And that's why I like Salah. I'm not pensing in a move here. I'm going for him as a template. But yes, if you guys want to be more Maverick, Chelsea at home is not the best fixture in the world. And that's why you guys could chop and change. Next up as a consistent option, it's going to be Martinelli from Arsenal. Now, there might be some kind of controversy about this one. Arsenal's fixtures upcoming, Spurs at home and then Liverpool at home. Now, those two games I actually can see Arsenal scoring in, especially because of the form they're currently showing from an attacking point of view. Arsenal, the most informed side probably in the Prem at the moment. And that's why I think you have to have some coverage from the attack because a player like a Jesus is highly owned. The nice thing about Martelli as well is that if you guys bought him at the start of the season, pretty cheap price point. And that's why even if he doesn't get a return every single week, he's still good value for money. But if you guys do have a lot of value in the bank after creating this draft, you guys can always upgrade him, but then you'll probably lose some value on Martelli if you want to bring him back in. 
And then our final option to go for, we've had a pretty stacked midfield. So now we're going to go into budget option. It's going to be my budget option of choice, which is going to be Andreas Pereira. Now, unfortunately with Andreas, William came into the side, has taken some set pieces off Andreas, and that's why it's kind of gone down as a threat. But still, I think at 4.5 million, perfectly fine price point for the Fulham cam. Just have to hope that he gets involved the next time Fulham score three goals. But as you guys can see, in terms of the midfield, pretty template to be honest. I think most kind of wildcarders will go with this. Unless, as I said, if you guys want to be more maverick, you can take out Zaha and go for a one-week punt. Now finally going to our forward department and the first player, no controversy there, not like a trend, not like a Salah, it's going to be Erling Haaland for Man City. Now there has been some controversy because some people have been saying that they would go for Harry Kane on this Game Week 9 wildcard because as you guys know, Man City's fixtures aren't that great, they never blank in Game Week 12. So yes, that is an option, but you have to be super maverick to do that. The effective ownership of Haaland is going to be off the charts this week, off the charts in Game Week 10 and 11 before that Game Week 12 blank. So I would suggest going with Erling Haaland. I think he's a perma captain if you guys want to be more safe. And you guys have seen, even though he only scored one goal last week, his consistency is off the charts. So I'm not going to focus on him too much because everyone's going to kind of own him going into game week nine. Let's go on to the last two forwards. Now, in terms of the forwards, not really that much of a debate like last week. I think that Isaac has fallen down the food chain, even though he did score that penalty and got three bonus points. With Callum Wilson coming back into the limelight, I don't really like him as an option. So that kind of leaves two options in my opinion. It's going to be Tony or Mitrovic. So Tony, I do like him for that game week nine fixture against Bournemouth. is an away game, but I think that should be quite a good one. And that's 100%. If you guys want to go for him, I think that's great. But unfortunately, in this wildcard draft, I can't afford Ivan Tony unless I go for a super cheap third forward, which I don't want in the system. So I want to stick to the 3-4-3 system, and that's why I've gone for Mitrovic in this department. 6.9 million, a little bit unfortunate for us owners. Fulham scored three goals. The talisman, inverted commas, of Mitrovic wasn't involved in any of them in game week 8. But if you're from game week 9 onwards, he kind of repays that faith. Now the Fulham fixtures are still pretty good coming up, and that's why I think I would go for Mitrovic still, and just hope that he ticks along nicely at that cheap price point. Now the last forward to go for, as I mentioned, can't afford Tony, and therefore I've kind of split the funds, and I've gone for a mid-range option. Now that mid-range option is going to be Solanke from Bournemouth. Now I know, not the best option in the world, but he's going to be nailed, is on penalties, I do believe, and Bournemouth's fixtures aren't too bad coming up. So in terms of my own kind of plan for my own transfers, I'm actually planning to bring Solanke in come game week 11, and that's why I'm kind of skipping ahead, going from now, you can always bench him if you want to, but I think you should tick along nicely with these nice fixtures. So as you guys can see, in terms of the forward line, pretty predictable. Haaland's a no-brainer. Mitrovic, most people will go for him. But I think Solanke is an out-there punt, and that might be the only weakness of this team. So if you guys can't really see a rotation pairing of Solanke, Andreas, Williams, and Patterson, then I'll probably take Solanke out and go for another asset, as the defenders and midfield is a lot cheaper and better value than he currently is. So to kind of wrap up the draft, we're going for a 3-4-3 formation. Got three premiums, a stacked midfield, and the forward line looks pretty strong, but Solanke and Mitrovic might be kind of the weak points. Let me know what your guys' current draft is down below, and let me know what you think about this draft. I know it might be template, but at least you guys can kind of add your own flavor by making one or two changes. But now let's go on to the actual fixtures or the team selection inverted commas for the upcoming Game Week 9. I showed you the price points, the formation. I'm now going to be showing you the fixtures. So to start off with bottom right hand side, didn't really discuss the finances in the previous talking point. So currently I could afford the current draft with 0.3 in the bank. So if you guys have more money than that, you could make one or two upgrades. With 0.3, I might actually upgrade a Patterson or Neko Williams to a better option because you might need them come Game Week 12. But I'll show you that in the next talking point. So starting off on our bench, Guita against Chelsea. I mentioned potentially starting Danny Ward. I'm going to do it in this team selection as I do think that's kind of the realistic option if you guys go for this goalkeeper pairing. Then Andreas, Patterson, and Neko Williams all kind of pick themselves. Yes, the fixtures might look good on paper, but I generally trust my starting 11 to get more points. Talking about that starting 11, let's go over Danny Ward, which might be the controversial team selection pick. I just think uh, Nottingham Forest aren't that great going forward. Leicester, though, are pretty bad defensively. So it's kind of, who do you think's worse? The Nottingham Forest attack or the Leicester defense? To be honest, I can probably see Leicester conceding. So this might not be the best play. But I just want to show you guys the option if I was to go for this goalkeeper pairing. Then heading on to our back line, the defense kind of picks itself. Cancelo, Trent, and James are all going to feature. The fixtures on paper don't look that bad. United at home is a pretty tough game for Man City with the way United are currently playing. But at the end of the day, this is a Manchester derby, and Man City are Man City, and therefore this could always be a clean sheet and an attacking return for Cancelo. Super happy to have Trent at home. Great fixture on paper there. And then James's Crystal Palace away, where we kind of going to have a contradiction of Zaha versus James. Just have to hope that one of them gets some points. Talking about Zaha, our midfield apartment, Madison, Salah, and then also Martinelli accompany him. Fixtures on paper look pretty strong, except for maybe the Chelsea game for Zaha, but as I mentioned, it's quite a talisman, so if Crystal Palace score, hopefully he is involved. Now the Martinelli game, the North London derby, is going to be a high scoring one, I do believe. You just saw how many goals as Spurs just scored, how many goals Arsenal is scoring this season, but now watch it be an actual boring 0-0. But at the end of the day, at that cheap price point, Martinelli doesn't have to score against everyone, and I simply have him here for some nice Arsenal fixtures coming up. 
Madison, don't have to say anything about that fixture. Great fixture on paper. Even spoke about him as a potential captain. I just can't see Leicester not scoring here. And Madison seems to be involved in everything they do. Then finally, Salah, the big kind of budget midfielder to go for against Brighton at home might be a tempting captaincy option, but it might be slightly maverick with the high effective ownership of Haaland currently. But still, you're going to bring in Salah anyways, so for Brighton at home, good fixture on paper, and it's been interesting to see how Brighton set up defensively without Graham Potter. Then finally, our forward line also kind of picks itself hard on against United, probably the captain going to game week 9. Mitrovic against Newcastle, tough game on paper there, but it is a home game for Fulham, which I am hopeful of. And then finally, we have Solanke against Brentford. And just remember that Brentford, I think, have kept one clean sheet this season, haven't looked great defensively. So I do actually fancy Bournemouth to score, and hopefully Solanke is involved. So in terms of the Game Week 9 fixtures, not the best fixtures on paper, but I do think this is a wild card, not a free it. So from Game Week 10 onwards, you guys are going to reap the rewards. Now the final talking point I wanted to go over as mentioned in the introduction is Game Week 12. So as I said, Man City versus Arsenal is going to be a blank fixture. A lot of us do own those Arsenal assets, those City assets, as they are some of the best informed teams currently. So what to do with Game Week 12? Well, thankfully, on my Game Week 9 wildcard draft, you guys will have the exact options in your starting 11. So yes, you'll have 11 starters, one on your bench, but that's Danny Ward, and he's not going to get any points probably. Talking about that bench department, you can see that he does have Leeds at home. Now, Leeds is actually a good game. I think it might be a slightly better game than Goita has, but I just don't trust that Leicester defense. Now, the more important part of the bench is going to be the three options that I've chosen to keep. It's going to be Haaland, Cancelo, and then also Martelli. So all three of these options, I do think you guys should be keeping. Man City have great fixtures coming up. Arsenal have some nice fixtures from an attacking point of view. So I'm perfectly fine keeping these three, but you guys can also take them out. Now going on to our starting 11, we have Guita against Wolves at home. Wolves currently are struggling to score. And that's why I'm perfectly fine playing him. But between Ward and Guita, I think it's kind of a 50 50 -er. But if you think that Guita is my favorite option, but you guys might differ. Then moving on to our back line, Patterson and Neko Williams, both 4.1 are going to come straight into our Game Week 12 team selection. Newcastle away for Everton, pretty tough game. And then Brighton away for Williams. Now both these two defenders, I don't have much hope for, but at least they are starters in their respective teams. And that's why I'm happy to call on to them for Game Week 12. We then have Reese James and Trent. Better fixtures on paper, but uh, Brentford away is going to be a tough game for Chelsea, I do believe. Then moving on to our midfield apartment, we have Salah against West Ham at home. Great fixture with the current form that West Ham was showing. We have Madison against Leeds. Great fixture on paper. Zaha against Wolves. A little bit of a tougher game there. Wolves have actually improved defensively. Even though they do struggle to score, they defend pretty well. And finally, Andreas against Aston Villa, who are also not playing the best football at the moment. Completing our forward line, we have Mitrovic against Aston Villa, same fixtures as Andreas, then Solanke against Southampton, who also are defending pretty well. So in terms of the team selection for Game Week 12, not the best on paper, but if you guys do navigate to the bottom right-hand side, three transfers from Game Week 9 to Game Week 12. So you guys aren't banking three transfers, please, you can only bank two transfers. But I want to show you here is that you do have three transfers to play around with the starting 11 to make it slightly better. So there are some moves that you guys can potentially do, maybe a downgrade on the bench if you don't want to keep a Haaland, a Cancelo or Martelli. But what this does open up for you is that potential Haaland to Kane move come game week 11 and hopefully have enough money to bring him back in at the same price point. So what I wanted to show you guys here is that at least with the current Game Week 9 wildcard temper, you guys are prepared for Game Week 12's blanks because you currently have a full starting 11 and three chances to play around with. So please keep that in mind when you guys are building your team. Remember, a wildcard is not a free it, and therefore you shouldn't be focused on only one Game Week, and therefore focus from Game Week 9 to 12, then we can take Game Week 13 to the World Cup after that. But this is basically wrap up the video guys. Hope you did enjoy it. Please don't forget to like if you did and subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. Tons of content still upcoming over the international break. So make sure those bell notifications are on and you guys are following me over on Twitter. But I'm going to sign off. It's been Dave the FPL and I'm out. Cheers. Bye.